What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always Headphones Neil bringing you a consolidated episode of reviews. So um, I'm going to start it off with a TV show series that I finally had a chance to finish. So as we head into the final season of Fear the Walking Dead I thought I would watch season 7 I think it was and um, basically have a general review of what I liked and disliked and all of that. And then I'm going to follow it up with a dual game and a video game and movie review because they kind of go hand in hand and I only really decided to rewatch or I want to I say rewatch because I think I watched the movie before but um, I started playing the video game Assassin's Creed Origins and I thought I would watch Assassin's Creed the movie to see kind of how that is based on my early playthrough of the game. And then I'm going to round it out with a customizable feature for your Android smartphone. It is a little bit more on the advanced side of things, even though the, a lot of it can, it can be done on a basic level to learn it. But it is a little, does take a little bit more time to learn, but I thought I would share that as a means of customizing your home screen. So with that being said, um, I finally finished getting through We Are the Walking Dead Season 7. And overall, I want to say that it was a pretty good, good season. We have all of our heroes um, spread out apart from each other because of the nuclear blast uh, based on how where they were before and then how they ultimately come together by the end because they're trying to find out who this Padre is, what that what it is, um, does he even exist and what's going on with this secretive organization. Um, the downside, and I'll start off with that, is that the season kind of follows much of the uh, prior seasons um, up and down of um, episode qualities. Um, overall, the Strand episodes were actually pretty good. Um, and then we have, you know, his right-hand man being Dr. Pershing from The Mandalorian. So I thought all of that stuff was kind of good. The hero stuff was okay in the first half of the season, but by the time you get into the second half, it actually improves quite a bit, and it notably starts with the episodes Ophelia and Sunny Boy, because you're coming into um, the end game of the season. Um, you're we're realizing that all the heroes are gonna have to come together to take the tower back from Strand, but ultimately they're gonna have to find out who this Padre is because whatever the organization or person is about, they figured out a way to survive um, in this community, keep people safe, and all of that stuff. And all of that comes under the guise and premises of um, Alicia's mom being alive and being a part of Padre. So the reason she's been out of touch for all this time is because she, first off, is a surprise that she, she sur uh, survived the stadium, but she's been working for Padre because she's was or out of sight and out of mind all this time because um, she was trained by Padre to not care about her kids anymore. So even though she says that, you know, the whole thing about being a parent, family, and all of that still comes into play. So when she learns that um, her children are dead, and potentially at least Nick, but when she learns her kids are dead, that's when things fall apart for her and she decides to help Morgan. But um, it was an interesting theory, and I like the little bit of glimmer of hope when she thought about the possibility that Alicia might still be alive. So um, we'll see if that comes into, a, uh, if that's a factor in the next season, season or if Alicia is truly dead because it seems like they, it, it goes along those theory of if you don't see it happen on screen, it didn't happen. And, be, and theoretically, Kim was not around, and I think her name was Kim, but um, she was being gone all this time and you didn't see her die in the stadium. So is a possibility that Alicia will come back. Um, listening to my favorite um, talking or Walking Dead podcast, The Talking Dead, it sounds like they that Alicia is not going to be part of the show in the final season and she's truly dead because of actor commitments. So we'll see if any of that changes by the time we get to um, the final season. But overall, it was a good season. I liked it a little bit more than most just because it felt more pointed, more uh, focused on various storylines, um, and everything was kind of just working together and flowed a lot more nicely. So the uh, flip side and the only thing that I did different with this season compared to prior seasons was I actually binge watched this over, um, you know, 
one of my like the past month or whatever so I finished 16 episodes in the course of a month instead of 16 weeks so I think that also helped quite a bit as far as pacing because I was kind of going one after another after another so when the final season comes out I'm almost tempted to do the same thing but I also want to see how they progress a week over week so we'll see by the time it comes but um, overall I'm in a pretty good mental state as far as Fear the Walking Dead season um, 8 just because now that I'm caught up I'm actually intrigued to see um, who this Padre is, does it have anything to do with um, the Commonwealth or the, the Walking Dead universe as a whole. Um, so with that being said, um, this week I started my next video game playthrough, um, Assassin's Creed Origins. So I was trying to decide between that and um, what, whatever the other Assassin's Creed game is on um, Xbox Game Pass. So I started with Origins because it did come out first in I think 2017 or something like that. Um, and so overall the game is looking to be an interesting game and when you start playing it you'll realize that um, on a semi-related Star Wars note that Star Wars Jedi Survivor is, um, or sorry, no, Star Wars uh, uh, Fallen or Jedi Fallen Order, the, screen, the game system seems very similar to the system that they used for Assassin's Creed Origin because I was thinking and playing that this seems very very familiar and that is actually why I think, just unoffic unofficially based on my observations. So now that I know that, and I once I realized that after the second bit of gameplay, the rest of it actually went pretty smoothly and it does look like an interesting game to uh, figure out the character that you're playing, this Bay, this uh, Magi character. So um, look out for that gameplay all over on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash patelan01. Um, I've just barely finished the prologue and I'm starting in on Alexandria so I don't know too much as far as what's going on with the story but overall the graphics are nice. The uh, well, Now that I figured out the transport system on your mount uh, that makes it navigating a lot easier knowing or understanding the distances for things and when you're which way you're facing and jumping and attacking and all that. Now that that all makes a lot more sense the gameplay is that much more fun so overall it's keeping my interest so I do am interested in uh, playing the game that much more. Um, so on a related note I had totally forgotten that they had made an Assassin's Creed movie so um, once I remembered I decided I would give the movie another watch because I think I watched it when it first came out. I didn't really like it um, not necessarily because it received bad ratings but because I had no context for the movie the animus or anything like that but watching it now I actually thought it was a uh, interesting movie um, as far as what they were trying to do they're trying to find the um, in a, the original apple that caused the downfall of man apparently this Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was keeping it a, uh, protecting it and keeping it away from the Knights Templar and that sort of thing and overall all of that story was very very well done. Um, the thing that was weird that oh not weird but they kind of explained it was that Michael Fassbender's character was the only one who could take the body of his ancestor from 500 years ago is because they're ancestors and you need a blood relative I guess in order to inhabit their body because of the DNA match. So I thought that was actually kind of interesting but I actually kind of wanted a little bit more story because it feels like um, the Da Vinci Code actually filled in a lot more backstory than Assassin's Creed did. So I actually did want more backstory of um, the Assassins and Assassin's Creed, um, their fight with the Knights Templar, and just more lead up and building into that struggle and them working together, fighting against each other and all of that stuff. So um, it was one of those things where the idea behind the Assassin's Creed movie was good, but it just felt incomplete and lacking. The story was kind of slow. Um, the interactions between uh, Michael Fassbender and Marianne Cotillard, or Colletar, I've always said her name wrong, and then her and then her dad, and with her dad were actually interesting, and then like kind of conversations with the dad in that society were interesting, but it just didn't seem like it had a lot of cohesive, interesting story. Um, I wanted a little bit more on Michael Fassbender and his uh, crimes and all of that. So it was just one of those things, like I said, like it felt incomplete and there was a story missing to make it more interesting. So 
it didn't really deserve the like 20% and like 45% or whatever ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, for me, I would probably give it about a 60%. The visuals were nice. I liked the transitions that they had when you're entering or uh, loading up the animus and going into the guy's mind from 500 years ago. Um, I like the eagle eye view or the incorporation of the eagle eye view, the fight sequences, especially at the end. But it just felt like... Um, it was a, a movie without a proper story or point. So even though the point was to get that the original Apple and there was a, the Knights Templar versus the Assassins um, and all of that was all interesting, but it just was missing that little bit of nudge to push it over the top to make it a good movie. So personally, I would actually recommend watching The Da Vinci Code instead of Assassin's Creed because it takes you down a more complete path and road and builds upon those connections a lot more and has a good payoff by the time you get to the end of the film. So with that being said, um, I, like I said, there is, a, or I don't know if I said it or not, but there is a link in the show notes to the uh, gameplay playlist for Assassin's Creed Origin, but it is also up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. So if you want to follow along and get updates on that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And you can see how I played already if you want to get a kind of early look at the game if you've never played it before like me. So you can check out the prologue and kind of get an idea of that particular story. Even though it's different than what's in the Assassin's Creed film, the film actually gives me a good general idea of the kind of struggle that's going to happen and more anticipation as far as what's going to happen when you're not in the Animus as a character. And um, I'm kind of anticipating more story outside of ancient Egypt. So with that being said, I'm going to round out this particular, um, or actually before I round out the episode, um, and on the note of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, um, depending on when you hear this episode, um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is going to be released. So I don't know if it's going to be available on Xbox Game Pass, but um, my current thinking is that if it is released on Game Pass, then and I can play it, you know, via streaming, then I might pause the Assassin's Creed Origins gameplay. Especially now that I've gone through the prologues, at least I've finished a section of the game and I know what it's about, that I'll play um, Fallen, Je or Star Wars, whatever the Star Wars Jedi Survivor game is, Star Wars Jedi Survivor might be it too. But if it's available for a streaming gameplay on Xbox Game Pass, then I might stop to play that, but... If not, then I will continue with Assassin's Creed Origins. So either way, look out for that. All, of it, all the videos of the gameplay will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. So with that being said, the final uh, bid for this review or this episode will be the Android app Custom Live Wallpaper Maker. So if you're an Android user or you're a tinkerer with mobile phones and you've wanted to customize your home screen beyond you know, widgets and icon packs and icon app shortcuts and things like that, then Custom Live Wallpaper Maker is an app to definitely check out. It takes um, your home screen customization to the next level where you can actually customize your home screen to just about your heart's extent. So when you install the app, it'll ask you for a few permissions. So if you want to do things like have weather on your home screen, then you do have to give location um, permission. If you want to export things and load certain information or load icons and things like that, then you will need to give storage permissions. But once you've got all of that set up, then essentially you can set up your home screen based on kind of the look and feel that you want. So you can do something like if you remember the old Zune HD by Microsoft, if you want a home screen that looks like that with just a list of app names, you can do that. If you want a home screen that's a media player, so um, you know it shows album artwork and the track information and playback controls, you can do that. Um, if you have want to set up a home screen like you have seen the screenshot for the show, the image for this episode's um, show notes, then you can do things like have one image when you're not listening to any media, and then you can show weather information, a weather forecast, and then have app shortcuts. But when music is playing, for example, or you're listening to podcasts, then you can change the screen to pull the album artwork for whatever you're listening to, pull the track information, change the colors of different elements. So 
if you want a border then you can do that if you want your uh, background color to change from let's say black when music is not playing to the co um, color extracted from the cover art of the music that's playing you can do that um, you can set app shortcuts so if you want to create your own you know pseudo icon pack you can do things do that so let's say you like the line x icon pack like i do you can use another app called i think it's called icon z where you can actually extract various um, app icons from the icon pack you like and use it with custom live wallpaper maker so you know you can do things like you see in the screenshot where you can put a border around it and a background so when music is not playing you extract colors from the uh, default image of your choosing and then when um, let's say music is playing then it'll extract a color so your border is one color like a vibrant bright color and then the background is a darker other color and then you can create your own colors like mix yellow with black so you get a little bit of a darker yellow so things like that happen where you can do all those sorts of customizations so your home screen looks and feels uh, unique to you to be something that is something you like and um, is distinctly you um, and even if you don't want to go that far into it you can just have you know a list of um, app names that you like so you can do things like you can have eight apps or whatever and have like you know camera gallery uh, mp3 player or let's say Spotify and Pocket Cast so you can have those four app names on your home screen touch them to open the apps you can set a lock, a lock, a shortcut to lock your screen. You can have you know the date and time at the top. So you can do all sorts of different things with custom live wallpaper maker to make it distinctly you. And especially things like if you want to extract color from an image, that's where it really shines for me. That it is a good place to, uh, or a good app to use where you can extract color from a preset image and change dynamically as you're listening to stuff and make it distinctly you. So I definitely recommend checking it out. It makes for a very nice um, app or, or not an easy to use app and it is nice but it's not necessarily easy to use because it does take time to get used to. So for me I always recommend and how I learned was playing around with different elements, um, starting with simple things like image and text, moving them around to where I want. You do have to remember to adjust for your notification drawer and then if you don't use swipe gestures like me then and you have buttons at the bottom of your screen then you need to make sure you account for that and then playing around with things like stack groups so if you want uh you know a media player that has just the album art and playback controls next to it you can um set up a stack group so that the whole l or that whole little element will actually move around all together at the same time so you don't have to worry about moving one thing at a time wherever you want so like I said and that's just the basics of stuff you can even do things like set global variables you can set touch interaction so if you want to touch a, um, an icon and open up a folder or a list of items or you can, if you want to you know sh um, hide one element and show another the custom live wallpaper maker can do that sort of stuff for you um, I will say don't expect to learn all of that stuff right off the top of your head um, or and right off the bat because there is a lot of different stuff you can do. For me, I haven't done things like locking items, hiding elements from the items list and things like that. I just have everything in my items list so if I need to make changes or move stuff around and that is all available. But overall, it is a very powerful tool for your Android home screen that where I recommend using it if you want to um, customize your home screen more than what your default launcher gives you. If you're bored with your custom launcher or you just want to have something that's uniquely you or um, I've seen things on the Google Play Store for example where people created a Windows UI, um, a card layout, um, like things they call different things but essentially you can have you know even if you want a minimalist home screen like a couple of weeks ago I was talking about O Launcher and Pro Launcher you can create a layout just like that where you can set um, app shortcuts or if you want to use an app like pop-up widget then custom live wallpaper maker will give you that option now instead of having to wait for and then this is not a negative on you know pro launcher or o launcher but you can use things like that now in custom live wallpaper maker so you can have access to not only apps but app shortcuts as well the one thing to remember though when you are using it is that it does not necessarily work on every single launcher so it's kind of 
hit or miss with, you know, O launcher. Actually, sorry, it doesn't work with O launcher as far as interactive elements, but if you do want to um, set up a fixed wall, live wallpaper, it'll support that. Um, it's hit or miss with the OnePlus launcher. So in general, it does work, but because you can't hide the dock in the OnePlus launcher, it's kind of annoying there. So I always used to, I always recommend using Nova launcher, but I think um, like Launch Air launcher, Niagara launcher, and a few others work um, equally well. But for me, if you're getting started, Nova launcher is a way to go to make sure it works. You install the app, start playing around with it, and before you know it, you'll have a home screen that is set to you. Um, the main thing though to remember is if you are creating your home screen, you don't have to be a designer, but I recommend going into it knowing generally what kind of uh, layout you want because you can do things like build it up over time. So if you want to have a section for just a media player, you can start with that, make sure that works, and then move on to the next thing like having a weather widget set up, so weather with forecast, importing icons and things like that. And then move on to things like app shortcuts and, th and that sort of thing. And once you get that set up, then start messing around with things like overlap groups or stack groups, changing the color of elements when music is playing using formulas and that sort of the stuff. So as you work your way into it, you'll get more and more familiar. You can build upon stuff. And before you know it, you'll be able to set up a very interactive home screen that you like and enjoy over your current home screen launcher UI. Um, so with that being said, the other place that, re that I recommend doing, or thing I recommend doing is going to YouTube to search for tutorials and then the custom live wallpaper maker website also has a lot of tutorials the developer has set up a lot of stuff so if you have questions you're not sure how to do stuff or you're not sure why things work the way they do and his tutorials are definitely a good way to get started learn stuff um, find out where to go to mess around with things and generally just get used to stuff so as you're building things out and want to learn how to do different things then a Google search or a YouTube search will get you the answers you need. So that is all for this particular review, so an episode for that matter. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on Twitter, app, or not just on Twitter, but on any of the social media networks I'm on by visiting the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, it also has uh, subscription links, way to support the show, and all of that good stuff as well. And of course, if you want an ad-free version of the episode, want it a little bit earlier than the, what you see on the public feed and also without ads, then you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.